Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship here at the Warren Wilson Presbyterian Church. It is truly uh, my great joy to see all of you out here. I know I keep saying that, but it's still true. Um, it will always be true. Welcome to worship here today uh, on the first Sunday of Lent. Uh, and because it's the first Sunday of the month, we will be receiving communion, as you can see. I hope you, um, we are still doing that in a socially distanced way, a kind of a safe way with respect to our COVID protocol. So, um, there are individual communion packets on the uh, table in the narthex. If you didn't get one of those, uh, you might want to and would wish to uh, participate in this sacrament with us today, share in this meal. You may wish to step out. And, oh, Susan has them in the back uh, there for you if you need one. Um, and uh, just to point that out as well to those of you who are worshiping with us online, if, uh, you are, if this news is coming as a surprise, you may wish to push pause and gather the elements you'll need to participate with, in this meal with us today. A couple of quick announcements um, in addition that you can see these in your, for yourself in the bulletin, but I just want to highlight the Nicola Mila offering in particular. Um, we have reinstituted that. It has come back to life along with other aspects of our church. Uh, we will be receiving the Nicola Meal offering today. That is in the little red, ba is a red basket on the table back there? It should be. Um, and, and those monies go to, uh, to address um, food security issues, food insecurity issues really here in the Solanoa Valley. So uh, we do, uh, would be glad for you to support that as you're able. Um, and those are, uh, should be uh, on the table with the regular offering plates in the back. Uh, I think that's uh, all we need to announce for today. Um, anything else just from the body today? All right, well, seeing none, let's then prepare for worship with our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. I knew there was one other thing I wanted to announce, that is just simply to thank Joel for this 
beautiful tablecloth and pyramid that now graces our communion table. He does this just voluntarily. No one even asks him, but uh, thank you, Joel. It's really, it is a beautiful, strikingly beautiful piece. Um, and that quote, as you will see from our preparation for worship, or from our call to worship, is from Psalm 51. Speaking of which, would you now please stand in body or in spirit for our call to worship? Today we continue our Lenten journey, a journey from ashes to Easter. Today we acknowledge that we will face temptations along the way. Today we remember whom we worship and serve. Let us worship God. we pray together the prayer of confession. O oh God, the world resounds with so many deceptive voices, calling us to be afraid, to be small, to remain hidden, to be something or someone other than who you created us to be. Forgive us when we heed these voices and succumb to these temptations. The world is full of so many treasures, love and friendship, beauty and kindness. Forgive us when we choose things of lesser value over these wondrous and holy things, these things that are not things. As we begin our Lenten journey, set our feet back on the path that leads to life. Through Christ we pray. God's amazing love is filled with grace, and we are forgiven. 
by the grace of Jesus Christ, we are loved forever. I'd like to invite the children and youth who are young or those young at heart who'd like to come forward and join me on the steps for our time for the child in us all. Come on up. We're going to sit from this side over, okay? Good morning. Y'all can come over, fill in over here if you'd like to see a little better. Great. It's good to be with you guys this morning. I brought the Oh, we've got one more. Come on up. We'll wait for you. Absolutely. I brought the children's story Bible up because I wanted to show you a picture in it. Do you see that picture? Who do you see in that picture? It looks like Jesus, right? What does he look like in this picture? Where, where do you think he is? In a desert. In a desert. That's right. Do you guys see it? He's in the desert. Um, how does it look like he feels in this picture? Tired and hungry? Yeah. Sad, maybe? Yeah. He's all alone, isn't he? He looks like he's all alone there in the desert. Yeah, right? Well, our story, um, our scripture today that you guys will hear in just a little bit is the story of Jesus in the desert, in the wilderness for 40 days. Today is the first Sunday of a time that we call Lent. Have you all heard that word before, Lent? Does anybody know what it means or want to tell me what they think it means? What is Lent? What do you think? Oh, it's getting warmer. Uh huh. So usually in Lent, it starts to get warmer because we're getting closer to spring. That's a good, good thought. Yes. What else, Margaret? <clears throat> Preparing for Easter. That's right. So 40 days before Easter is when Lent starts. It started Wednesday. And we do 40 days of Lent because Jesus had 40 days there in the wilderness. And while he was there in the desert, like I said, it looks like he's kind of lonely. You said hung hungry and tired. Jesus was tempted in the desert, in the wilderness. What does the word tempt mean? Have you guys ever been tempted by something? What do you think? What are you tempted by? Yeah, so you see something that you really, really want to do, but maybe you think, well, should I or should I not? Like, that's tempt. That could be a temptation. Well, someone said tired and hungry. One of the things that happened while Jesus was in the desert is that he was fasting. He was not eating. He was, he was hungry, right? And some, the tempter came to him and said, if you are God's son, take these two stones and turn them into bread. And you know what? Jesus did? Well, he didn't do it, right? He said back to the tempter some scripture that he knew by heart. He said, we don't live by bread alone. We live by the love of God. That's the Sarah Grace interpretation of the Bible. You're not going to find that in the NRSV. But that's what Jesus said. He, he leaned and he dug deep and he remembered the scripture that he knew and that's what he shared in the face of temptation. So if you guys have temptations that face you um, in the time um, coming forward as we prepare for Easter, what you can do also is remember, you can pray, and you can remember the scriptures that you know by heart. Because I know that there are some that you know by heart. You remember by heart that you are a child of God, that God loves you, that you are beloved. So when you face these temptations that you might see, Margaret and I were talking in the car this morning that sometimes when we see someone that's not quite like us, we might be tempted to roll our eyes or not think twice about them, but instead maybe what we can do is show them God's love. So when we are tempted, we remember, like Jesus did, the scriptures that we know by heart. We pray, and therefore we go and show God's love in the face of temptation. 
Can you guys do that? All right, would you like to pray with me? Will you repeat after me? Awesome. Dear God, as we prepare our hearts during Lent, help us remember that we are loved and you call us to love others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, good to be with you guys this morning. This morning's Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all you produce from the soil of the land the Lord God is giving you and put them in a basket then go to the place your Lord God will choose as a dwelling for his name. Say to the priest in the office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God. My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, subjecting us to harsh labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us to this place, gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household.
The good news and our text for preaching today comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, a story we read also on Wednesday when we marked our formerly our entrance into the Lenten season, the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. As we prepare to hear God's word read and proclaimed, then let us pray. O oh God, we come into this beautiful and sacred space from a world which is full of noise and distractions, loud trucks, jackhammers, leaf blowers, sirens, all manner of things that fill our ears with unwelcome sounds and our hearts and our minds as well. So we ask now that you would indeed silence any voice in us, any noise in us, any voice in us but your own, so that we might hear your word, and in hearing your word, the truth of your word, that we might be set free to love. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So now hear this word from the Gospel of Luke, these words. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan just after his baptism, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I will give it to anyone I please if you then will worship me, this will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him up to Jerusalem, placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels charge over you, concerning you, to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. <clears throat> when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of God for the people of God. From September 22nd, 1999 through May 14th, 2006, Martin Sheen starred in The West Wing, hit television show The West Wing. He portrayed his portrayal of President Jed Bartlett won hearts and minds all across America in large part because he was honestly an ideal president, perhaps idealized president, the president we all long for deep down and seem so rarely to get in practice, strong and wise, brilliant and compassionate, principled and caring, thoughtful and decisive. <clears throat> in 2010, Martin, Mr. Sheen took on a radically different role, which won hearts and minds, its own share of hearts and minds, if for entirely different reasons. He played a man known only as Tom, in a charming, low-budget, independent film called The Way. It is the, story, <clears throat> excuse me, it is the story of a pilgrimage, but not one Martin Sheen's character, which is to say, not one Tom was intending or expecting to make. In fact, it was Tom's son, Daniel, played by Emilio Estevez, who was meant to be the pilgrim. Unsatisfied with how his life was going, with perhaps with where his life was headed, Daniel dropped out of graduate school, bought a backpack and some hiking boots, 
<clears throat> boarded a flight to France. His ultimate destination was the trailhead, as it were, for El Camino de Santiago, the way of St. James in English, perhaps the most famous, doubtless, I think, the most famous pilgrimage route in all of Christendom. Daniel set off on his pilgrimage intent on walking the entire length of El Camino, filled with the hope that he would find himself along the way, or perhaps to find a new and clearer, more meaningful purpose for his life. These are obviously admirable intentions, and they are shared by thousands of real-life pilgrims who walk the Camino every year. Unfortunately, in Daniel's case, his journey was cut tragically short when he was killed in an avalanche in the French Pyrenees just two days into his, um, into his journey. Enter Martin Sheen, which is to say, enter Tom, Daniel's father. Tom flies, also flies to France with the intention of recovering his son's body, of bringing Daniel home to be interred in the United States. Except <clears throat> once on the ground in France, Tom makes a decision that will radically change his life. He takes one look at Daniel's hiking gear, his boots, his backpack, and decides to make them his own, decides to make his own pilgrimage to complete the Camino, to walk the way as, a, as his own way to honor his son's memory and perhaps to find something undiscovered in himself. In saying this, I'm really not giving anything away. All of that is set up, really. It's the kind of thing you would see in a trailer for the movie, for the way. I tell that story here simply to say that Tom discovered a timeless truth that has been known to spiritual pilgrims from all traditions for centuries. When the path ahead is not clear, when the path ahead is clouded by grief or doubt or uncertainty, we make the way by walking. In making this journey, in walking this way, Tom finds answers to questions he didn't even know he had. The history of the Camino, El Camino de Santiago, dates all the way back to the ninth century. It's a fascinating story, I commend it to you. But in the Christian tradition, if we are looking for the very first trailhead, as it were, the very first trailhead that leads out into the wilderness, we have to go back much further still, all the way back to the story we just read from Luke. It's an unsettling story in a sense because the text is clear on this point. It's the Spirit that leads Jesus out in the wilderness to be tested, to face down his greatest temptations. Evidently, even Jesus needed to undertake this journey, to pass this test, to overcome his temptations, to fully become himself. <clears throat> Now, you might think, well, who cares, really? You, <laughs> you might not be pondering any particularly weighty questions at the moment, feeling no need to find answers to questions you don't even know you have. And certainly, certainly, after these last two long, miserable years of living under the unwelcome restrictions of COVID, a long period that has felt like its own kind of wilderness, well, a journey into yet another wilderness may be the very last thing you wish to undertake. At this point, I suspect we've all had more than enough wilderness to last a lifetime, thank you very much. Even more specifically, for Jesus, the wilderness was a time of testing, and I suspect that for most of us, it feels like our patience and our resolve, our faith and our joy have all been tested to their very limit. Don't need any more of that at the moment either. Thank you very much. 
And during this time, I'm reasonably certain that each of us in our own way have faced down our own temptations, that we've all been tempted to cope with the unpleasantness of COVID in ways that are not particularly healthy. Spend too much online clicking that magic button. Eat too much. Drink too much. Clean the house too much. Scrubbing floors, rearranging cabinets until our knees hurt and our knuckles bleed. Stay inside and mope too much. Give in to despair too much. Sit on our bed in the darkness of our bedroom and cry too much. So maybe as we walk this way together, maybe this year, it's time to reimagine what this Lenten journey might mean. If Lent is traditionally a time of repentance, testing, introspection, and if we have had more than enough of those experiences already over these last two years, if we're not really ready for any of that, maybe this year Lent can instead be a journey of discovery. Without giving anything away, <clears throat> Tom is joined on his journey on El Camino by three unexpected command companions. So what began for him as a journey of remembrance, a way to honor his son, to assuage his grief, and perhaps assuage his guilt at the ways he failed in Daniel, well, his sojourn becomes instead something else altogether. It is a journey, it becomes instead a journey of community, of discovery, of friendship, of renewal, which is to say, he made the way by walking. So what might this Lenten journey be for you? Where might it take you? What new and unexpected discoveries might you make? What new companions might you find and meet along the way? And yes, what might you learn along the way about yourself or about the world or about faith, your faith in particular, perhaps, about God? about what your life and what your life means what your purpose is <clears throat> the way ahead for us now in this present moment is like it or not and boy howdy i don't the way ahead is still filled with uncertainty is it truly safe now, as the president re recently said, to go out in public that we do not need to fear COVID-19 any longer, that it's time to resume our normal routines? Well, obviously not quite yet. If we do venture back out and resume our normal routines, might another ver variant emerge which will send us back into our safe spaces our safe practices? We simply don't know. But the same is true, if that sounds like hard news, and it, you know, it is, the same is also true of life, always. We don't know what's ahead, what is to come, what challenges and avalanches and setbacks and temptations we might face. That happens maybe not every day, but all the time. That's the way life works. What we do know, <laughs> what we do know, what we can say confidently, is that the only sure way when you find yourself stranded in the wilderness, the only sure way out is through 
the only way forward is the only way out is through. And we make that way by walking. Thanks be to God. Will you stand and join me in the responsive affirmation? Jesus invites us to follow him into the wilderness and to fast from our dependence on ordinary things. Let us walk his way with trust. Jesus points us to a way of self-giving where power and status are overturned. Let us walk his way with humility. Jesus beckons us to a way of faithful risk letting go of our security and trusting in God. Let us walk his way of courage. Jesus calls us to follow the way of the cross, where despair is transformed by the promise of new life. Let us walk his way with faith. Jesus models for us the way that makes for peace, peace for ourselves, and peace for the world. Let us walk in his way with love. Hear the gracious words of our Savior. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Friends, the table is set for all who are weary, all who seek the bread of life and cup of salvation, graciously offered by our Lord. Come. Come to the table of grace. It is prepared and ready, and all are welcome.
Please be seated. Friends, the Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to glorify you and to give you thanks, holy and living God, for you dwell in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing, and you pronounced them good. When our waywardness led us away from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. Again and again through your prophets, you called us back into covenant with you, called us back to walk the way of love and peace and justice. And because you loved the world so much, in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten one to take on human flesh, to be one with us and for us. So we pray today for this world you love so much. We pray especially for peace in Ukraine. And we pray for the people of Ukraine, for their safety and protection in this perilous time. We pray, O oh God, for all who are affected by war and terror. And we pray giving thanks to those welcoming refugees in countries neighboring Ukraine. We pray for those throughout Eastern Europe using their voices, their actions, and their love to seek peace. We pray, O oh God, for those in our own community who are victims of senseless violence. And we pray for our siblings in Christ who are experiencing sorrow, grief, fear, illness, and hopelessness. We pray, we pray especially this day, O oh God, for Grace Boyer as she grieves the loss of her father. And we pray for Jenna Marvin as she adjusts to life back in her own home. Hear, O oh God, the prayers of our hearts this day. And finally, we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit upon us now that we may be filled with new energy to serve. And upon these gifts of bread and cup, that they might become for us the bread of life and the cup of hope. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we gather today around this table in remembrance. For we remember that Jesus, on the night of his arrest, gathered with his friends, the disciples, there in the upper room, had a meal together, and there was bread. And so Jesus took that bread, and after giving thanks to the Lord our God, he broke it. And he said this, is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And on that night and at that table, there was wine. So after supper, he took the cup and after pouring it out said, this, friends, this is the cup of the new covenant. It's sealed with my blood, that is, it's filled with my very life. As often as you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep the feast.
Let us pray. O God of endless compassion, God our Father and our Mother, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you began the work of healing the world's wounds and overcoming darkness with your light. During this Lenten season, help us to follow his example, to love you, our neighbors, ourselves, and even, yes, our enemies with open minds and willing hearts. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Tighten your belts, friends. Lace up your boots. The way is made by walking.